Niofar Rahmani's downfall. The Taliban began to threaten her and threaten her family, forcing her to seek asylum in the United States, which was just granted. In moments, I will speak exclusively with Captain Romani, who joins me here in New York, Trace Gallagher, with her story from our newsroom in L.A. Trace. Martha, when Nilofar Rahmani first became a pilot, a military pilot shuttling Afghan soldiers to and from the battlefield, the U.S.-led coalition touted her as an example of what Afghan women could become. Photos of Rahmani in a khaki jumpsuit, loose head scarf, and aviator sunglasses went viral, and she became a public figure, even a national celebrity. But that notoriety also made her a target of the Taliban, who dropped a letter on her doorstep telling her, quote, you have not taken our threat seriously. If you carry on on doing your job, you will be responsible for your destruction and that of your family. The letter went on to advise her, quote, to learn from Malala Yousafzai, the Nobel laureate who was nearly killed for fighting for women's rights in Pakistan. Within weeks of the letter arriving, Nilofar Rahmani's brother had two attempts on his life. Her sister was banned from seeing her children, and her parents, who support her career, went into hiding. Even Rahmani's cousins and uncles considered her profession shameful and wanted to punish her to avenge their honor. Rahmani says her male colleagues in the Air Force treated her with contempt, and when she initially applied for asylum in the U.S., military officials in Afghanistan told U.S. officials that she was lying and that her life was not at risk. In 2015, she fled to the U.S., where she received the State Department's International Woman of Courage Award. At the time, Rahmani said, quote, all I want now is to go back to my dream dream of flying, a dream the U.S. military paid for, training her to fly C-130 transport planes. After being granted asylum, Rahmani's U.S. lawyer said her life would be at grave risk if she were forced to go back to Afghanistan, where her family still lives, save for one sister whose marriage also brought her to America. And it is notable that after 16 years of war, the United Nations says nearly 15 percent of Afghanistan is still controlled by the Taliban and ISIS. Martha. Trace, thank you very much. Here now, an exclusive first interview since she was granted asylum is Captain Nilofar Romani and her attorney, Kimberly Motley. Good to have both of you um, with us today. I mean, you are such a symbol of what everyone wants for your country, and I know that women and families in your country support you so much. But you tried to pursue that dream when did you start to realize that that was going to be extremely dangerous for you? Um, I knew it, it will be a risk because in Afghanistan, as a woman, you're not allowed to go to school. But being in the military, of course, it's not an easy thing. And uh, I was very lucky to have the support of my family. They stood in each step of my life and uh, they supported me to be where I am. And uh, I knew it will be a risk and I accept that risk from my life, but not from my family. And uh, unfortunately, when that risk started to my family's life, and uh, it became a big problem for us, and I couldn't tolerate that anymore. I mean, how did you find the strength and the courage to do what you did, knowing that the Taliban, who, you know, rules the country in many ways, um, would never allow a woman to do what you wanted to do? Uh, true. So uh, I was uh, six months old when my family became a refugee due to war in Afghanistan. And uh, all the school work shut down for girls in Afghanistan. And uh, we were living in a refugee camp in Pakistan for a long time. And we were not allowed to go to school. And my parents, they taught us at home how to read and write. So that, um, that really bothered me to see myself as a girl. Why I can't go to school? I have the same ability a uh, man has, the same ability that my brother has. And um, I was lucky that my parents, they treated me the same as my brother. And uh, I had a strength, like it was my father, and um, he stood by me. And um, I think that was uh, a big success in my life, that I had him yeah. by my so, side. So now you're here, and they're there. Are you, and you're, you're afraid for their lives now, that the Taliban, have they, they've been threatening them as well. Absolutely. In Afghanistan, we all live together. So it's not like uh, if it is threat in my life, it's only me dealing with that. Unfortunately, it's entire my family. And uh, definitely, I am worried about it. And it scares me. Uh, most of the time, um, it really scares me that I feel they are there and I hope they are safe. That happened 
to them and all this risk that they are facing, it's because of what I have done. All I wanted to do is serve my country. You're an extraordinary person. Uh, Thank and we you. pray for your family and we hope that they are going to be safe. Um, difficult for you to help her get her asylum, I know, and we're, we just have a few seconds left. But a quick thought on how you did that. Well, I mean, I, I think the uh, U.S. Immigration Department was very, um, saw her case for what it was, that her life is threatened, and now it's the goal for her to become a full-fledged U.S. citizen so she can continue her dreams of flying. You have an amazing story. Kimberly, thank you for helping, and um, great to have you here. Please thank keep you. in touch. We want to follow your story. Great to we'll be right you. back with more.